let people know that you are somebody and they'll believe in you. All you need to do, as I said earlier, believe in yourself and other people will believe in you. You've got to, on a daily basis, feel as though you did the best that you're able to do. You've got to know what your best is. Nobody else can know. Not even your teachers. The best way to know what your best is You can't talk off by not doing the homework, by not doing the work in advance. If you prepare, you will wind up with such self-confidence. The only reason you ever have a bad boy, the only reason you have a person that's incorrigible or hard to handle is because that person is not happy and the, the person they're not happy with is themselves. It's not that they're not happy with the world around them. They're not happy because they're not doing the best that they can do. If you prepare, It's not easy to achieve, it's not easy to achieve greatness by the standards that you set for yourself many times, but it is easy to achieve greatness when you say, I'm great. And if you believe it, the rest of the world is going to believe it. If you believe it, your parents will believe it, your friends will believe it, and guess what? You will have all good friends, you won't have the drug problem, you won't have to worry about saying no to drugs because people wouldn't dare approach you about them. If you're secure in yourself and you feel good about yourself, People don't try to leave it down the wrong way. I'm going to open this up if there happens to be any questions. Um, I think Mr. Ruderman is going to come out from the audience. I'll answer any questions you'd like. Questions about what it's like to be in show business, what it's like to live in California, what it's like to have lived here and gone away from home and come back. And every time I come back, I feel like I grow a little bit more. Um, any questions you have about universities all over the West Coast and sometimes the Southwest. If anybody has questions, what you need to do is you need to put your hand up. And I first of all want to say a special hello to Mr. Jones. She knows I'm wrong, but I can't There she is. She's the one that called me. It is exciting. I get calls from all over the country because the people that see the show are in North Town. She called me on the cell one day and I was so excited because we've been friends for years. Of course, she's a lot older than I am. on how to handle their career. I do career counseling all over the country. Anybody wants advice in terms of how to get show business, what you have to do, and if it's possible, I'll be glad to help you. I promise you, I will answer you, and I promise you, I will help you. So if anybody has any questions now, and don't be shy, you can ask everything about my age. I'll even tell you my weight. I'll probably lie, but I'll make you feel good. Okay, go ahead. I didn't hear it. How did you start it? Okay. They had never been alone in the home without one of us there, my husband and myself. So what I did was that it was doing motivational tapes. And it was making it difficult for me to sell my tapes because people around the country, except for the East Coast and West Coast, didn't know about me. And I thought, oh, a good way to sell my tapes is to go on television. So I went around to a lot of very powerful people. And let this be a lesson to all of you. People like uh, Bernie Whiteman, who was the head of development for Laura Moore Productions and John Stephen Down. Um, I went to a man, um, Mr. Rich, who was also part of the went to a man, Jack Sellers, with Universal Studios, called them on the telephone and told them, remember what I said, say to people, I need, call these people on the telephone and I said, I need help. I want to get into your business. I've been very successful at what I've done, but I know nothing about your business and I would like you to afford me 10 minutes of your very valuable time. I started with Bernie Weissman, I went into his office, it was so impressive to see 
this also consists of his son stands out, and the man gave me two hours and 45 minutes. Told me to quit ball, told me what to expect, and I went to Universal Studios to Mr. Selleck, and then I just began calling people and meeting them, and got information. Remember what I said?
I, I, I'm always happy no matter where I am. That is true. I love anywhere I happen to be. And anybody who knows me knows that's a true statement. I love coming to Southern California. We plan a picnic almost any day of the year. I think we all operate better in sunshine because well, things always seem to look better in the daylight and in the sunshine. So I love it. However, hot holes and all, my heart is still in our hands. One of my major goals, and this is a true, true statement, and it doesn't mean that I'm going to come up here with a lie, but I, one of my main goals to doing what I'm doing is my party, being away from my mother, my brothers and sisters, and family and friends, mainly family, is that I wanted to be bi-coastal, meaning I wanted to be part of the year here and part of the year there, and that I am achieving. And so I love California, but there is no place like not. I didn't hear anything. Why does it cost so much? Why does it cost so much? Why does it cost so much? Um, college really doesn't cost all that much. When you take into consideration the cost of things, everything is relative. Um, if you plan ahead, first of all, unfortunately, there are so many scholarships that go begging that people don't even apply for that fast. So I think you need to start thinking early on in life whether you want to go to college or not and then get the information in terms of uh, scholarships that are available. And you can always get sponsors and you can earn money, put the money aside, invest the money in letters and gain interest. If you really want something in life, you'll get it. You get your counselors, you get your teachers, you get the support and help in searching out those scholarships and you'd be amazed how many go begging every year that are never even applied for. Um, relationship to other courses, college does not cost that much. Yes. And how did you fit in the um, issues of the you know, how did you fit in the I think the question is how children, perhaps this age, get into some of the uh, situation comedies, etc., that go on Friday nights and Thursday nights. For example, the Cosby show, the, 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 the child actors who get into those shows. How do they get there? Okay. That is by having stage parents, uh, and if you have parents that would like to see you do uh, anything like that commercial, um, still pictures for commercial advertising, or actually what you have to do is get in touch with a local union like ASTRA, American Federation of Television Artists, here in Philadelphia, they have a very active office. You need to become a member of the union. Uh, you don't become a member of the union right away, but you need to become a member of the union. But if you go to the union and ask where the workshops are and have your parents get you involved in a workshop, you don't get anything unless you're willing to starve for it and sacrifice. So it may be a struggle in terms of getting them here to Philadelphia to train, but you need to start locally and find out if you have what it takes by getting involved in the workshop uh, and getting involved in the union. And you can make it the same as anybody else. You have to be the type of person that is resourceful, you have to be the type of person that loves people, and if you don't, you'll never make it. I think it's probably fair to say that on top of going to that, that guilt, that actor's guilt, that a lot of these children have trained for years, have they not in acting? Absolutely. They've done a lot of training there. How many, I, I have a question, if you don't mind, that will get to Anne Marie. For each half an hour of a situation of comedy like Bill Cosby, about how much time is involved in taking that show? Uh, for Situation Comedy, I'm in the studio with, uh, are you all familiar with the show What's Happening Now? Yeah. They produce the same studio that I'm in, and uh, they're really good friends of mine, too. And um, it takes them, they rehearse, they do a run-through on Thursday night. They do a blocking by the script writers and the people that do the blocking on Wednesday night. They get the blocking set up, that means where should they be standing when they say this line, where should they be sitting when they say that line. Then on Thursday they come in and they do probably three run-throughs. They don't get their script until the finished script until Thursday. So when they do the run-through, that's why it takes three times. And then they shoot live on Friday with a live audience. So that takes, when they do it live with the audience, it takes them about 22 and a half minutes. Because a lot of commercials, a half hour show, 
is 22 and 10 minutes. So they have what they would consider a dress rehearsal to run through the night before and then they go for it. So what I heard you say is it's probably about three days prior to the actual taping. Is that right? right. And on, on Friday night, incidentally, they do two tapings. They take two every Friday. One at four and one at nine. Seven. How many children do you have? How many children do I have? Three and a half. I have three sons of my own and I have a stepson. And uh, my three sons that are mine live in California and my stepson lives in Tennessee. He's a minister of my hospital, for which I take an offense. We're waiting for a question over here. I can I'll hear you in a second. They can yell at two if they want, I'm probably here. Well, we want to go practice. Oh, okay. Did you ever see anybody that's the only one that's in the middle? Can't hear. Did you ever see anybody that's the only one that's in the middle of the show? Were you able to meet a personality, a particular person that you really wanted to see when you were younger? Do you want 
children's different names. And my children's names? My eldest is Cain Child Miller. The next one is Barry Richard Miller. And the youngest is Garth Russell Miller. I figured I'd give them unusual names in that way. At least people would know who they were. I wasn't sure how it would work out.
specific skill, like say how to type or something. Because if you don't learn the basics, you can't learn the other things that will make it impossible. Don't do them very well. If you learn how to read, you can always learn to learn to read well. And if you get in the habit, and of course today, and I'm not that familiar with this method of learning, what's stored in computers, that opens up a whole new area of learning. So I tell you seriously that you learn the basics, and you can learn the rest on your own if you have to. If you stay in school or if you go to college, you will probably learn a lot of good and useful things. But I would say if you don't do the basics, you'll never get to the advanced ones. Thank you. Thank you. 
that helped a lot because in the back of my mind, I had a desire to learn something. I think that would be the most important thing. I think today, to not get a least a high school diploma was, is going to be a major mistake because the people who you work for or whatever you do, they will think that you are just not very capable if you don't at least make it that far. So do it one step at a time. Dr. Bressler, I understand that you are a dentist of children's like, uh, children dentistry. That's right. Um, what is your area of special concern? Well, we specialize mainly in children. Uh, we work on children from approximately three or four days old all the way up until they're 19 years old. And we handle every kind of dental problem that anyone might have up until that age. Okay. Um, how does ch children de dentistry differ from adult dentistry? There's a big difference. Children's dentistry basically um, just specializes in the care of infants, children, and teenagers, and we take care of special needs that the kids may have, such as being afraid or not wanting to go to the dentist, and sometimes we deal with kids that aren't as cooperative as we'd like them to be, and we need to talk to them and give them special care so they can relax mm -hmm. and have their dental work done. Usually with adults, they just sit there and whatever has to be done, they get done. It's a little bit trickier with kids. Mr. Kyle, on behalf of Eisenhower students and staff, I would like to welcome you to Eisenhower Middle School's fifth annual career day. I have a few questions to ask you. First, what is the average day in an attorney's life? 
Well, normally the average day will start at 9 o'clock in the morning. However, if you have witnesses to prepare for trial or documents to read over because of an agreement that you're going to be involved in during the day, then sometimes you get started at 7 o'clock and we'll run through till 5 or 6 o'clock. Again, if you have cases that are pending that need attention, uh, many times you'll be back in the office from 7 o'clock to 10 or 11 o'clock uh, researching the law uh, on those cases that are coming up the next day or that week. Okay. Hi, Mrs. Consalvi. On behalf of the Eisenhower staff and students, I'd like to welcome you to Eisenhower's annual, fifth annual career day. I'd I have... Thank you. It's my pleasure to have been invited to this affair. I have a few questions for you. Have you had any students that have become famous since you've been teaching them? Yes, I have. One, one is outstanding in my mind. A young man in the second grade, whenever I read a fairy tale to him, to the class, he was the only one in the classroom that would not accept it. He did not believe in fairy tales. He had to really, he had to have just truth and nothing but the truth. Today, he had advanced into the field of scientists. He's one of our leading scientists in Washington, D.C., and unfortunately has passed away within the last year. I have another question for you. How has teaching changed since you've been a teacher? The methods have changed completely, but to the best. I would say that from the time that it was just textbook teaching until the present time, where you do with your hands instead of just reading, is a fabulous situation. I think it's just great. And you want to know something? We owe this to our leading administrators, one in particular to whom I know, and I will give my credit to who has really accepted all this, and that is Dr. Whitney. You're Mr. Lubins, I welcome you on behalf of the Eisenhower student and staff to Eisenhower's 50, fifth annual career day. Thank you very much. I have a few questions asked you. Okay. How has technology affected the Navy? Technology has brought the Navy right now to probably the finest Navy in the world. Uh, considering the mission that the Navy has to do and the fact that we only have 600 ships to do it with, technology has put the Navy in a capability of performing virtually any task assigned to it right now in the world. Okay. How, has, w how have women affected the Navy? Well, the women have uh, done an outstanding job in the Navy since they've been, since they've been a part of it. Uh, they've done jobs equal to the men's. They get the same benefits. And Thank you for watching the Eisenhower Middle School's Career Day program. On behalf of myself, Lynn Kaler, Kathy Ferretti, Kelly Johnson. From Norristown, the sky's the limit. <laughs>